I'm just going to give a brief instruction uh, to myself uh, and then we will get uh, going. So as I said, my name is Akira Kant. So I am a coach and I work with women one to one to help them to transition in their terms. I also work um, to help new female coaches and consultants um, to, to transition from self-employment, sorry, from employment to self-employment um, successfully. So you are in the right place if you're considering becoming a coach or a consultant. Um, and this um, first uh, video is really going to help you to think um, and take radical responsibility for your career transition. Okay, let's take it away. So the agenda for this session is that we're going to be exploring the following uh, topics uh, noted below. The first topic is managing fear and doubt, what people, th what people will think, fear of losing progress or status, making the wrong choice, making less money, fear of failure, upsetting other people, partner, spouse, parents, etc. Letting the negative what ifs hold power over you. So we're first going to look at mindset and career transition. I often like to say there is no perfect because there's always something happening with us internally or externally out there in the world that we live in. Um, and this is so true. You know, there's always something happening. Um, we have to be mindful not to be caught up um, in that thinking, which doesn't allow us to focus on solutions, uh, focus or opportunity, or what can we do to move forward? So the first thing is to take radical responsibility for your career transition mindset. Um, and I highly recommend um, habit number one from the seven habits of highly effective uh, people um, and being proactive is definitely where it's at. Um, and that really is about focusing on what you can control um, and really doing everything within your power to change your circumstance and your situation and understanding that your, your circumstance or situation um, is temporary. It is something that you can um, change over time. And even if we are in a difficult or bad situation, it will not be permanent. Secondly, change is always to be certain of. So you've got to make sure that you commit to making a transition uh, plan uh, because that will stand you in your stead. And then finally, you will always be waiting if you don't take action to plug your knowledge gap, um, your skills gap, or get the support that you need to make the career transition that you're seeking. Taking career risks. So I like to say that facts are friends. And by the same token, you'll never understand your appetite for taking career is daunting than doing it. And I can totally understand um, and relate to this because, you know, um, or having um, doubt is definitely a powerful um, emotion, but it's something that takes our time and our energy and distracts us from actually doing the doing. So this is what, I, what I'm um, uh, alluding to when I say that um, the thinking is more daunting than the actual doing, because actually when you do it, you find that although yes, it may be um, initially difficult in, in the first instance, but over time it gets easier and with practice, you know, it becomes second nature. So taking career risk is part of carving out your, uh, sorry, taking career risk is part of carving out a successful um, career. Now, especially if you want to become um, self-employed, you know, you'll need to get used to taking calculated risks. So there is a mindset um, methodology called win-win. And again, this um, I'm referencing the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, and this is all about um, a belief that, you know, you can um, work with a compromise and everything is winnable. Um, and it really takes um, a mind, mindset shift to believe this um, or to come to um, your shade of um, a win-win mindset because you know, not everyone um, can uh, you know, engage in the, um, you know, the, the, the high end of this um, belief, but you know, even if you move you know, somewhere 
um, closer to it than you were before, that definitely uh, helps you to, um, to be more successful and take those calculated risks. So uh, the cost benefit analysis of taking calculated risks um, is far better than the pain of regret. Um, and you know, wishing as you watched um, your friend, your mate, is that you or so, um, you know, managing fear and doubt, feel, feel the fear and do it anyway by Susan Jeffers. And one of the key principles it discusses is expanding out of your comfort zone. And I 100% agree with that. Um, you know, so I think that we need to think about fear as um, part of the evolution uh, process in human behavior. Uh, and the goal here is not to get rid of fear, but to manage it and to put a break on it so that we can succeed um, in the career that we are choosing. So mindset is not theoretical. And what I mean by this is it requires you to take action. You know, that you need to become aware of your triggers, those fears and those doubts, but crucially you need to decide what you need to do about them. It's not just, um, great. it's great to have awareness, but awareness with no action, um, does not equal any results. So we definitely have to be mindful of that. And finally, undertaking an active practice to put a break on feelings of fear and everyone are vital to managing fear. There are a, a suite and a plethora, plethora of um, techniques um, out there to help you to deal with this. Um, and depending on how you um, personally, um, you know, um, manage fear and doubt, um, there may be um, different ways that are more useful to you. So, um, um, and to, you know, getting, um, shifting your energy and moving to um, a higher state of energy. Because when we're in a low state of energy, obviously we feel constricted, um, fears, um, doubts, and worries. But when we shift that energy by um, either movement, um, dance, running, walking, um, any kind of physical activity, we change um, the energy and we raise um, our, our heart rate. And that also sort of um, breaks the hold of um, those feelings that we have. So uh, what would people think? Oh, this is a juicy one because um, we are human um, and we are social beings. And what people think of us um, can be important, but it can also be um, a stranglehold on us. So we allow other people to take up space in our minds at the cost of our dreams, potential and abundance. So be sure to evict the voices that aren't important to you. We really have to take radical responsibility for who we allow to influence our thinking. And that's so important. Uh, there are some people for whom the world is not full of possibility and will always find a reason why not. I'm going to re repeat that because it's really important. There are some people for whom the world is not full of possibility and will always find a reason why not. Um, and what I'm saying to you um, here um, very strongly and in, on, in plain words is that there are some people who are just not risk takers. There's some people who have a very, um, you know, different worldview, um, and that's okay. And it's not our job to change them. It's our job, our job to change ourselves. But it's our job to be conscious uh, and aware that if we're hanging out with these people, um, you know, we can sometimes get into situations where there is groupthink uh, and some of their um, thoughts get embedded into our minds um, until we break away. We, are, we don't really have given us the opportunity um, to think the thoughts of self ourselves. So I really urge you to think about who are you hanging around with and are those people serving um, you and the thoughts that you want to be thinking. Okay. The work to understand um, how deep other people's thoughts are embedded in your mind may um, you know, need coaching or therapy to work through. So what I'm saying about this is that, um, you know, even in my personal experience, um, I have had um, a coaching and we were, you know, looking at um, different things that I wanted to, um, to rest through. Um, and in that journey of our coaching, um, I came to find and realize that, um, you know, another person's thoughts had become deeply lodged within my subconscious. Um, and it was just automatic because I hadn't really thought to, uh, to challenge it. Um, so what I'm saying here is that we really need to be um, mindful and attuned, alert to what we're thinking um, and to think about does that really um, serve us and is that really what I believe and is that um, something that is going to take me forward 
um, in the way that can help me to progress uh, with my career transition. transition. So um, you have choices about who you surround yourself with. And I know that it's a very difficult um, choice to make, um, to, to leave or to step back from friendships, family members, or acquaintances, um, set of thinking. Um, you know, I recently met um, another coach. He told me that she made the difficult choice to actually, um, you know, step back from a lot of her friends because they were just not in the right um, mindset space um, and the direction that she wanted to go with. You know, she still um, values these people as, as people, um, but she recognizes that they are not going where she wants to go fundamentally. Um, and the, the only person that she can control is her. So she has made that choice to um, surround herself um, with people that, um, you know, are thinking um, expansively, thinking in the growth mindset um, and thinking, um, you know, in ways that will really allow her to reach um, and to grow um, her coaching business. Fear of losing progress or status. So we all have choices uh, to make in life. Understanding your values and what's truly important is vital. So I like to, to think uh, and, and acknowledge that nothing is lost or wasted when you become self-employed. You know, we're not just justicing what we did before. Um, it has value, you know. Um, that knowledge that you gained from being employed will aid you to make the transition because more often than not, we're using that, um, to, we're monetizing our knowledge, um, or even if we're not monetizing our knowledge, we're using the skills, some of the skills that we've used in employment, but just doing it for ourselves, being our own boss, being self-employed, having the freedom um, to you know, live the life that we want to leave um, and set the charges that we want to charge to live the lifestyle that we want to leave. You know, being self-employed does not change that status. It empowers you to monetize the knowledge that you have, as I said before, and it's, and it's an opportunity to create momentum, growth, um, and to define your own status and lifestyle. Because I truly believe that um, we need to create career success on our own terms, um, and that we are not widgets. You know, what looks good or, um, to you may not be good to me. So it's about what are my values, what I want from life, what impact do I want to make, um, and how am I going to, to, to do that? Um, and if you're thinking about coaching or um, consulting, then you obviously want to make a big impact. You obviously want to be your own boss. Um, and you obviously want to define your own status uh, and lifestyle. And you're definitely in the right place for that. Making the wrong choice. Oh, yes, this is an interesting one because it's about judging ourselves um, and judging things what we can simply simple, simply think of as um, choices, facts, options, which is why I've got this lovely uh, graphic with options and arrows um, and no, no judgment. So focus less on judging yourself. There are just choices. We learn by doing and only by doing can we decide what is right for you. So there are many op opportunities out there for us you know, in our life to keep redefining what you want from our career. We make these, these choices, you know, we um, take those actions, we, we learn, we gather data, and then we just keep redefining and iterating on that process. Never let your choices accuse you. Understand that choices are, it's really important to um, remove the judgment from the, these choices. They are just choices. Um, and, you know, I'm a massive fan of Susie Jeffers and, you know, she is really about, you know, helping you to see that there is so much opportunity um, um, and there is a real uh, way to shift your mindset such that um, I the phrase that she coins is you can be probably at it all the time um, and not, you know, feel constrained uh, by your, your choices. Taking responsibility for your choices and committing to them, you know, and making them right for you right now is so important. Live in the present and not the past. Making less money. I think that um, here, you know, there is so much potential to live a different lifestyle and that is priceless. Obviously, we are going to have to do work to make sure that we, pay, we can pay our bills um, and that we charge us sustainably. But, you know, yes, we have to invest um, money in getting the skills and the knowledge that we need. 
but we'll make that money back um, by actually doing the right things to create the money um, that is there for us um, to create a sustainable um, and you know healthy business. Understand your numbers and charging sustainably is so important. That will help you to generate enough money or more money than um, you need to live. And then you can decide how you want to use that money um, for impact, for other good in the world, um, for your family, for you know, whatever it is that you know you are um, aligned with, with your with your career values and the life that you want to lead. There is enough money to go around. You know, we need to understand our money stories. Um, and we need to step up and to serve the world and live the life that we want to lead. Now, you're going to say, why has she chosen the picture of a girl doing a fist pump? Um, and before I, I actually talk about anything on the slide, um, I would just like to introduce you to someone who I think is amazing. Um, her name is Sean Hunter, and she is the founder of Coding Black Females. Um, and I think she also um, recently got an honor. She's a fantastic human being um, and someone that you should um, follow um, and um, really um, learn from. So I mentioned her because I interviewed her um, for uh, another um, video series that I did. Um, and we talked about growth mindset and she is a strong um, advocate for growth mindset, but she relishes failure. You know, to my point, um, which is the first point, um, what if failure wasn't feared? What if it was celebrated and to be thanked for the data it's given you? She is someone who obviously is in the programming and profession um, and you know, has to constantly be um, debugging and problem solving um, and you know, what some might term you know, dealing with failures because things don't um, always at work. Um, and, you know, she has to make sure that she um, gets to the root of those things and solves the problems and issues. But um, she has a, a powerful growth mindset um, that she does look like this most of the time. Um, so I'm going to get to my quote, and that is reframing failure is one of the most powerful things that you can do for your, your career and your life. You know, failure is no doubt an emotive, is no doubt emotive. I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, it breaks down your thoughts and beliefs uh, and stories in, in, order to, in order to change them. And, and here's the thing: you have to take ownership um, about being aware of those those thoughts, uh, those stories, um, and how you're going to change them. Because changing yourself um, and making failure a more positive experience is game changing. Now, you can choose um, how far you want to go with your love of failure. You know, I'm not like Charlene and doing the fist pump, but um, I'm still in a place where um, failure does not have that, that strong hold that it used to hold on me. Um, and, you know, that's because I've worked at it and I, you know, and I continue to work at it. Um, and it's something that you definitely have to be able to uh, manage if you're going to be self employed um, as a coach or consultant. Um, or in any sort of entrepreneurship um, space. Um, and the sooner that you um, go down this path, um, the easier that it's going to be um, and the more transformative it will be um, on your journey to um, really um, getting in, in the mindset space, but also the action space, you know, having the habits and practice um, to allow you to think differently uh, about radio because it really is something that um, you have to um, get used to in terms of you know, our, managing up your expectations around putting out your offers, um, getting traction on social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, there are so many things where we think that we've failed because we haven't given enough, enough time. We haven't really analyzed the data. We've not really um, been honest with ourselves about, you know, how we have actually implemented and said things. So um, it's super valuable and important to really, um, you know, get down with um, ooh, upsetting other people. Yes, um, we spend, we sometimes spend too much time, too much of our time putting other people first and not acknowledging that you are important, that your wants, your needs and desires are valid and important. You know what, I'm gonna actually just repeat that. We sometimes spend too much of our time putting other people first and not acknowledging that you are important that your wants, needs, and desires are valid and important. So um, sometimes it's not easy to recognize other people's um, ideas 
thoughts um um a lot of the conscious we've talked about this bit before and you you feel upsetting them um but you gotta ask yourself the question whose life are you living um, and the fact is that you only have one life right so we have to um you know be mindful of how we, we live that life and we have to live a life that, that serves us and ultimately gets us to where we want to value and matter to us absolutely 100 me included um but here's the thing we just need to understand that those people that are for you uh, may not agree with you but they'll not stand in your way or make you feel guilty or ashamed of your, your desires and your dreams and that is so important and again it's like, like coming back to this point that i was talking about you know um surrounding yourself with the right people is really really important for your um your progress for your mindset for your you know ability to be um subconsciously um infected with like-minded people um, and as they say self-acceptance is an inside job and we have to be mindful of people pleasing tendencies um, that obscure our progress that could be a whole presentation in, the, in itself but um, you know what people pleasing um, is, um, and that's really, you know, around um, not wanting to um, put ourselves first um, and to really always be um, looking towards, um, you know, dealing with the desires of others before ourselves. But in so doing, we are blocking our own desires and needs um, and our progress. So definitely be mindful of that um, and think about and take action uh, on how you want to move forward. Letting the negative thoughts ifs have power over you. So I often like to say, and yes, I have said this before, but I'm just going to say it again. I often like to say that there's no perfect time, moment, or state of readiness because there's always something happening with us internally, externally, or out there in the world that we live in. So um, you need to take responsibility for your what if negative thinking. Um, and really resolve these problems and dispute them because some of these things are just fiction in our mind. Practicing working on letting go of endless what if negative ruminations, um, you know, will really help you to change your career. And positively, what I think then you'll be more solutions focused and making your opportunities. So you heard it here. Um, you have to take action to think the thoughts that serve you. And again, it's the action and the, the habits that you do daily that will help you. Um, in this practice and I'm going to end um, this uh, video with an affirmation and an affirmation is a practice that can help you to think the thoughts that serve you. So of course you are invited to the creator cohort of the senior female professional to coach or a consultant uh, program. What does that mean? So a creator cohort um, is the first, um, you know, outing of the program. Um, it's one where program. So there are five spaces left. There's already one uh, lady who signed up, um, and so this program is going to give the opportunity to get energetic and targeted support to build your mindset. But not only that, the tools for action and implementation, really helping you to focus in on those habits that will progress your transition. Cheerleading, because obviously I'm going to be there to support you, to help you. Build, to, to become the woman that will build your business from a solid physical and, and holistic perspective. Now, what does a holistic perspective mean? That really is about, I'm looking, um, that's really about taking care of you as a person, um, making sure that you're healthy and you're engaging in healthy habits, you know, and not burning out, you're not um, having a lack of sleep um, or any um, of those sorts of things um, that we know are not healthy to the system, but are, are really um, something we have to be mindful of, especially if we're moving into self-employed uh, space, because um, our health is our wealth. Um, and if we are not ourselves, um, you know, moving from a space of a healthy and a full cup, um, we're not going to be as effective and um, thriving in the businesses that we want to build. So just a little bit more about what 
in the program. So training modules, we are adapted um, to the group's needs. As I said, this is a co-created um, space where I will obviously provide you with content and materials, but I will ask for your feedback um, to really make um, you know, content that's dynamic and on the fly as we proceed through um, this program. So it's a six to eight week program simply because of this dynamic element. You know, you're going to get coaching sessions with, from someone that has recently been where you are now. So I'm two years and about four months into this journey. Um, and for me, I can really relate. It's not to me in the far distant past and um, the issues that you're facing. You know, um, I remember what that first year was like, and it was tough. Um, there are things that I have learned um, and things that I'm still learning um, through, you know, the coaching uh, groups that I'm in. And you get the benefit of that, you know, sharing is caring. And that's what I do. Um, obviously, yes cheerleading and support um you know to um, build your business from a solid mental physical and holistic so um you know you're going to get really insightful um con content to help you implement and the mindset shifts that you need to make uh coaching so weekly coaching and information and implementation q a sessions um, a really fantastic and awesome community of um, women that are all working um, towards their coaching and consulting businesses. Um, and it's really being in a space with other people making that same journey um, and that principle of, you know, um, we lift as we climb and really being inspired by each other um, to uh, keep going, to um, be solutions focused. Uh, and to really, you know, support and cheer one another with those um, lessons and growth. So um, this is all about um, the investment for the program. Um, so that is um, there. So please do um, reach out if you'd like to um, talk about whether the program could be uh, the right fit for you and how you can make it happen. Um, you know, I think that we need to be of that um, possibility mindset. Um, and by having a conversation, it doesn't cost us anything. But we may be able to figure out um, ways that we can actually progress um, and to move forward if that's something that we truly want. So please do um, step forward and have a conversation um, and let me know any questions or concerns that you have um, or anything that isn't clear to you. So as I said, I was ending with an affirmation. Always remember and affirm I am able to handle any career circumstance or situation. I'm going to repeat it again. I am able to handle any career circumstance or situation with resilience, confidence, and compassion for myself. So thank you so much uh, for joining me for this recorded session. Um, you can, can connect with me on LinkedIn at the Kua Kant. Um, please do join the mailing list. Um, so with the mailing list, you get access to obviously this recorded content, but you get actually um, special access to um, live sessions um, every Friday at 2 p.m. UK time, um, but that's only for um, ladies on the list. Um, and in that session, uh, it's a teaching session like this, but with Q&A where I will answer and respond to your questions um, and it's a more um, of a dynamic um, you know, experience um, and you get to be um, part of our growing community. So please reach out.